Hello, and thank you for joining us on this webinar about full care. I'm Dr. Kim Sprayberry. I am one of the associate internists at Haggard Equine Medical Institute, and I'm going to be talking about what I consider to be the most important aspects of full care, starting from the time before the foal is born and going on through about weanling age. A lot of the information I'm going to be presenting is drawn on my experience here in the Lexington, Kentucky area, but my aim is to present the information that I think will be very relevant and interesting for any owners of a pregnant mare. We'll first start out talking about pregnancy in the mare in general, and I'll give you a, a kind of an aerial view. First of all, the mean length of gestation in mares is 340 days. Uh, everybody gets very, very concerned about the how long gestation length is. And uh, so it's important to remember that the 340 days is a, is a mean value, which is calculated from a lot of data, a lot of mares. But centered around a mean is a normal range of 320 to 360 days. And there's a percentage of mares that actually carry their foals a full year. And this is normal in some mares. Development of the fetal organ systems is very rapid, and it takes place very early in gestation. By 35 days of gestation, for example, your veterinarian can ultrasound the mare and see the, the fetus's beating heart. And in fact, the, the, the fetus's beating heart and its complete circulation are separate from the mare's by day 35. Having said that, it's also true that some of the most important developmental changes that allow the fetus to survive as a foal do not complete and are not um, matured and ready for the foal to be born until the very last weeks and even days before birth. So it's good to know your mare's breeding date and her calculated due date. Inappropriate gestation length, whether it turns out to be abnormally short or abnormally long, that can be an indication that there's a problem with the fetus. An anecdote, an anecdote that many of we veterinarians kind of keep in the back of our minds is that the mare will decide what time of day she's going to lay down at full, but the foal is the one that decides the date of readiness. And this is because the final readiness for birth is determined by what's called the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal access in the foal. And until the last um, stages of maturation have been completed in that system, the foal is not ready to be born. This is why mares that have excessively long gestation periods actually are at risk of delivering a foal that is underdeveloped, not overdeveloped or too large. It's not really as simple as saying that it's been in the oven and it's over, it's baking or cooking too long. Because the foal is not signaling that it's ready to be born, it's actually an indication that the foal's development is hampered or slowed, and uh, again, this is a risk factor for something being wrong with the foal. And many times when foals are born after a very long gestation, an abnormally long gestation, they are small uh, and ill versus large and, and healthy as a result of having been in the, in the uh, uterus for a longer time. Foals that are born with a normal or long gestation period, but still have aspects of underdevelopment uh, are referred to as dismature. Premature foals, of course, are born too early. Dismature foals means that they were born after an appropriate gestation length, but still underdeveloped. And these foals can have a favorable outcome. They're typically born with neurologic problems, but a period of skilled intensive care is typically necessary to get that good outcome. It's also important to keep in mind that the uterine lining, the placenta, and the fetus are all intimately connected. Uh, they're all one unit functionally, and because of this interrelatedness, problems in any one of those elements often spell problems uh, that you can find in one of the other elements as well if, if uh, detailed examination is undertaken. Um, recognition of problems before birth can actually be difficult because even severe infections that the mare can get that disrupt uh, fetal well-being or cause uh, severe placental problems may elicit no abnormal signs or signs that we can see in the broodmare. 